call the Board of Meeting, Board of Health <laughs> Meeting to order at 7 p.m. In the public. Um, <laughs> uh, chair report. Uh, well, I guess I'll mention this, which was that there was a um, transformer that uh, landed on the roadway pavement. Remember this from la yeah last month, December 11th. This is dated. Um, so, oh yeah, it happened October 17th, and uh, mineral oil, dielectric fluid leaked. 36 gallons of it leaked. It has been cleaned up and received notification. Um, and then the only other thing I wanted to say was um, I looked at the most recent flu report from the uh, Department of Public Health and flu illness, flu-like illness activity in Massachusetts is high. It's higher than the previous two years, but there are fewer hospitalizations than in the previous two years. Mostly seeing flu B, um, which is similar to what people have been reporting nationally, and all flu strains that the state has characterized so far um, are covered by the current vaccine, so make sure you're vaccinated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> I feel like that never happens that way. I know. <laughs> well, <laughs> even though that, yeah, even if they're covered, it doesn't mean it, they're not, it's not 100%. Right. <clears throat> not even, actually, the flu vaccine is less effective than others, but um, but it's still better than nothing. Yep. So, do it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hope they didn't report. Um, I have two from December 1st to oh. December 31st. I'll do that one first. There was 25 inspections, 13 reinspections, three complaints. All three have been inspected and corrected. None are pending. Uh, no animal inspections. One septic abandonment. There was only a few shot flu shots administered. And then we had eight things in Maven. So norovirus, six flu, and one salmonella. Tobacco had no violations. And then we're in heavy permit season. <coughs> so we had 111 permits issued. Then November to December, which we didn't have our meeting in December, there was 10 inspections, four re-inspections, three complaints, three again. Um, <laughs> all three were inspected and corrected, none are pending. No animal, no septic in November. This is my back. Um, and we only had two cases. One was the flu, and one was the um, salmonella, salmonella again. And we did 103 permits in the month of November. Round table. Um, so I had a few things that I had seen. Um, they're all on uh, tobacco use. Um, so I just saw that there was a study that came out linking negative emotions, specifically sadness, with cigarette use, which I think is not super surprising, but it's a uh, direct correlation um, and, you know, just reemphasizes that mental health should be a big component in um, trying to uh, address substance abuse. And it may impact some of our decisions going forward. Um, also, a study came out last month in Popular Science that showed an increased risk for lung disease among users of e-cigarettes. So that's 1.3-fold, and then cigarettes, 2.6-fold, and then users of both would be 3.3-fold. And they noted that a majority of the e-cigarette users also <coughs> smoked cigarettes, which is interesting. Um, and then one last study that showed uh, um, a fungal toxin was found in the Juul, in Juul's nicotine vaping liquids. Um, 
like I think they said 46 percent of the pods that they tried uh, are tested. Yeah, I mean, so they had found the same group had done a study previously, and they had found um, bacterial endotoxins as well in some. Um, and, but they hadn't tested Juul at the time because Juul wasn't yet on the market. So they were back and retested Juul. They didn't find any of the bacterial endotoxin, which is good, but <laughs> they did find this fungal toxin. It's not clear if there's a clinical relevance because they haven't assessed, you know, whether the level is sufficient. Um, and yeah, uh, but Fungal toxin, fungal, <laughs> fungal toxin, yeah, chronic exposure to fungal, to this, to glucan, this fungal toxin can lead to lung inflammation and chronic lung disease. So, it's a possibility. Mm -hmm. And they don't know how it was introduced, right? How did it, how did the contamination get there? So, um, anyone else have anything that they want that they... Uh, have you been going to any, have there been any ARCASA meetings? So, yeah, I think I, I actually should bring that up. The um, ARCASA, uh, I think everyone probably got an email or alerted to, they kind of, they, they're reorging a little bit as far as the structure that they're, they're set up from government. I know Gene can probably speak to it probably a lot better than I can, but um, they're now going to be under the guise, not on a separate entity, right, Gene, essentially, so they're going to be um, paid. Um, town employees, mm -hmm. uh, the director and the assistant director. Mm -hmm. Is that the title? I, I don't know. I don't know what her title I is. I forget what her title. Yeah, yeah I, um, outreach coordinator. I, I think it is. Actually. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's a little bit, <coughs> little bit different structure, um, which uh, they still are looking for uh, members of the public to be on the board, as well as um, certain town employees or okay. you know from other departments. Uh, that they have that that they currently had like police uh, were on their uh, town manager superintendent school committee we were on there um, as myself as liaison on board of health so they're still looking for that but it's kind of a it's it's a different it's a different entity now um, and I think a lot of it was separated due to um, is it um, confidentiality issues that they that they might have so now if there's there's something that someone doesn't want to get involved with police and everything but they're on the board they're kind of I think the two are now separated so there's, there's a setup where there's your board members but it's not the same voting um, board members is that do I have that correct Jean? not that sure it's been explained to me, it right. it was explained to me once <laughs> and, I, and I knew the reasons why they they were looking to do it this way one because their fund uh, their grant right ran out. right so that was the you know what do you what do you do now with our casa you just let it dissolve which we know would be a horrible thing to do right um so it was a good move for them to now come under town government yeah. but that changes some things um in regards to how they can conduct business and how they have um voting board members and non-voting board <coughs> members yeah. um on it so um that's kind of the latest news that's come out from them um, I didn't make it to the last meeting. This was two meetings ago that they had it. They have one coming up at the end of this month as well, too. Um, so they've asked, uh, you know, they have to re-ask everybody, do you, do you still want to be board members? So um, if, um, if the board still wants me to go as liaison, I'm happy to continue to go. If somebody else wants to uh, jump in and, and do it, they can do that as well, too. So it doesn't matter to be either way. What is the entity? Okay, Great question. <laughs> So our cost, uh, well, it's now what uh, I'm not even going to know what the new title is. Pull it up on the website. Yeah. <laughs> um, but basically, it's the Reading Substance, Substance Abuse, Substance Abuse uh, Coalition, okay. yeah. and so they they changed the name. They tweak the name, but they're not really they're not tweaking what they do. So they're still going to be an outreach uh, branch from a substance abuse standpoint. Um, so it's a really um, nice entity that we have here in town, and it works mm -hmm. in conjunction with a lot of different. Uh, departments and boards, um, and certainly with the schools, uh, um, a ton uh, with the schools, which is great. So, um, yeah, that's the only news coming from that I have from those. Well, thanks, Susan. I'll take a break. Uh, maybe I can follow you in there. Okay. Maybe come with me for, at the beginning. Yeah. For a couple of meetings. Sure. Show me around. I work in behavioral health. Oh, you do? Okay. 
Oh, so this would be right up your alley. Yeah. <laughs> Sadly <laughs> enough. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'll um I'll get your email or I'll just email to to Laura. I just don't have the date in front of me. I'll, I'll pull it up and I'll send it to you. They have it right over at the police station, uh, at their meeting room. I think they typically meet around five thirty. I've um, never been to the police station. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> That was a great meeting room over there. Please, so. <laughs> okay, good. Very good. That's all I have for that. Okay. Uh, update on the vaping. Okay. Yeah, so the state did come back eventually with some guidance, uh, which is included here in the packet, um, which summarizes well, states what the new legislation is, and really, we don't have any age-restricted, uh, yeah, we don't have any retail tobacco stores, correct? Correct. So, or smoking bars, wait, <laughs> just want to verify, <laughs> here we go. Uh, so, uh, a lot of this is it doesn't really pertain, but it might be useful for the people with the tobacco permits to get a copy of this. Do you assume they, they, they don't normally get those? Do they get it automatically? I have no idea. That would just make sense, wouldn't it? <laughs> You'd think. <laughs> Does anybody, anybody so, know if they automatically get this? Do we send this out or the state? Send it out to the licensees? I don't, I don't believe they do, do they? I don't think the state sends it out to no, licensees. I don't think so. so that's on us. So um, the only question I would ask is what Marlene <coughs> Busby might be already working on with the other communities. Uh, I don't know. Um, Marlene yeah. Busby does our compliance yeah. checks and Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Right, right, okay. So we kind of outsource that function. Maybe that's where it would be. She'll um, explain it to them when she goes out, but she doesn't send out the package. Yeah, I think she's going to send okay. anything out, yeah. So. And is she doing her compliance checks in the spring? Doesn't she do them in the spring and the fall? Randomly, okay. when she gets the kids. Okay. So she's upping in a little bit because of all this. Yeah. <laughs> Moving target. <laughs> um, yeah, so it seems like we should send this yeah, so should we put a packet together, I guess? I mean, why do we don't send all of this? Lauren, we have a Yep. In December. There's not that much. Last when they banned the baby, I delivered them. Yeah. The thing. Oh, and for Yeah, so we just have an update saying there's no longer an emergency situation, but the ban is still active. So maybe we can just find that packet and sort of figure out what's in there and do something similar? Or? Yeah, it's fine. Just including this. Do you want to include page. all this? I think we just. I mean, can we just send out the three page? Yeah. Got it? All right. Well, just so you know, we have everybody, um, all the permitting is done electronically. So it's not a problem. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, so it's an easy, oh, it's an easy, it's an easy thing. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, right. this year we did a, a little bit different right. process with permitting. We worked a lot with the town manager's office. Um, Jackie in the town manager's office did a great job. And um, we combined a lot of the permitting together. So correct me if I have this wrong, because uh, Laura worked very closely with Jackie um, to get the everything electronic, all the combined permitting together. Um, so if you were getting a common victuals license and a permit for um, food, you would get, you would kind of receive everything together um, as opposed to everybody randomly doing stuff on their own. So I think it worked out pretty well. That's um, good. Cool. We have a really good database of contacts. Okay, great. We can send it out that way and hand deliver it or just send it out <laughs> that way. It's up to you guys. We hand delivered the last letter. I mean, I think electronic. I think electronic is fine. 
because it's not good. anything saying yeah, stop what been you're doing. so much media Change. coverage there's on been this. a lot <laughs> but yeah one more time like i say we, it's easy enough to do okay. so just that one page um from, I, uh, maureen oh the page from maureen Take back a lot. Take front near the back. Oh, okay. <laughs> Forget that. <laughs> I got it. It's a typo. Wonders. <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> um, the only problem with with this is it's not on town it's letterhead. Not official. Yeah. It's not signed. Right. I don't know if people would know who Maureen Busby is, but maybe they would. But who is Maureen Busby? She's our um, basically consultant who does the checks, the compliance checks for tobacco licensees. She does compliance checks and inspections. Mm -hmm. So we're just we're just emailing these out, right? Yes. All right. So can we just click and paste this on the body of the email and then attach the three-letter attachment to it? Say, so see see the attached from the state three-page letter, four-page letter. So send this as the body without Maureen's name on it. Yeah, just as a F, you know, and quick information. Yeah. And then see the attached see the attached letter from the state. And attach the letter. It's fine. Hmm? It's fine. Whatever. Without, without indicating that it was from her on that. No, tape. you know it doesn't have to. Fix the, about this it, one, right? fix the typo. <laughs> <laughs> typo. Additional reminders. <laughs> I see the reminders. Yeah. Just need yeah. an eye. Yeah. Additional reminders. <laughs> <laughs> I have a typo problem. I was going to say, you found it's it within like, like ah, two I seconds know, of looking at it. I know, I know. It just jumped out at me. So we don't even want it on letterhead then, right? No, because we'll have the... Well, this this, we'll have this, this, the state. I mean, state letterheads. I'm going to say, be consistent. If they're sending that to us, let's send it to them. Okay, so attach the, okay. attach this and send this. Yeah, and just put that, just add that in the body of the email. So Laura's going to send it on behalf of the Board of Health? Yes. Yes. To tobacco establishments. Yep. So just this thing we're talking about? The December. Sending that alignment. as the attachment. Yeah. Yeah. And none of oh. stuff. Oh, yeah, it's right. like four pages. And then there's that. Five pages. Then there's the full bill. Full no. Right. No, there's the justification. It's just the justification. Oh, and then that's, yeah, that's Should we just important. attach it, send it all? Just the, I mean, I kind of wonder, too. Yeah, like, I just send an email. Gonna, I like that send idea. It all. <laughs> Sounds good. More information is better. Some people might read it, some people might that's not. That's like, the more boring. information, the more people You're like, no, I'm not going to. <laughs> that's right. why well, you that's could, should that's just put it in. You can uh, send Maureen's in the body so they get the quick. Right, right. that read an email. Yeah. Think, yeah. yeah. And, and the rest covers us that we sent it. Yeah, I think <laughs> having yeah. this, like, info. this is the common language. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. the plain language. Yeah. Right. That's a good idea. Right, there's no plain language in the rest of the document whatsoever. I have a question for you, Laura, or anybody. Approximately how many tobacco permits are out there? We asked this question. Mm -hmm. I Sounds feel right. Like 18. 18? This seems low. Really? Really? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I was going to say it seems high, but. <laughs> well, it's only convenience stores. Really. Sounds about stores, right. Really. And convenience stores, gas stations, liquor stores. Stop and shop, market mm -hmm. basket. Stop and shop, market basket, yeah. I just, I, I thought it would be higher, that's all. Interesting. I would have guessed higher, too. Really? Mm-hmm. That's good, though. 18. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's enough. Yeah. Plenty. So we invited town council tonight to um, 
talk a little bit about, I, I know this question had come up in a prior meeting and I had followed up on it and Alex was nice enough to say, I'll just come to the meeting uh, because I posed the question to her, how do we deal with um, the new regulations in light of the old regulations that the Board of Health has on record, on file, on the website? Mm -hmm. And how do we process that? So I'm going to take my lead from, from the board, but I think the best way to do it, and there's, it's always a good time to look at your old regulation, especially when the state or the feds update uh, their regulations, which is what happened here. So I think now is a good time to take a look at the Reading regulation. Um, a lot of the Reading regulation discusses retail tobacco stores and smoking bars, which it sounds like Reading doesn't have, so I think we can eliminate a lot of that. Um, a number of the definitions have changed a little bit. Uh, looking at the DPH reg, they have specifically um, identified some, some of the e-vaping technology as um, a specific term to be defined in their regulation. Mm -hmm. So I think um, one of the better things for, for the town to do is to sort of piggyback off of what the state has used in terms of their terminology. Um, and. I'm happy, to, if you if you want me to, I'm happy to go through the current regulation as written and make suggestions and make edits uh, to send back for your review. I think we can take a look not only at the sales aspect of it, but also just make sure that uh, it's compliant with relatively recent changes. I think they occurred towards the end of 2018, if I'm not mistaken, to uh, the smoking in public laws and the workplace smoking laws. So just make sure that that, that is also consistent. Um, I, I do want, and I don't want to caution you, but I do want to, to make note that of a couple of things. One, my understanding is that the, at least one of the organizations that pertains to local boards of health is working on a sample or a model regulation um, for towns to, to look at and potentially adopt themselves with respect to retail tobacco sales. So that's something that you may want to keep in mind. Do you want to forge ahead with this now or do you want to give it a little bit of time to see what the model is? The other thing that I want to make you aware of is Although the current DPH regulation, what you have in that packet, is in force and effect. It's an emergency regulation, so they're able to put that through and have it effective now. It's not technically a final regulation. Um, they still need to go through the 30A process, the regulatory process. My understanding is that there's a public hearing that's coming Friday on it. They're um, soliciting comments. And ultimately, the Public Health Council is going to have to come back and adopt a final version of that regulation. Um, I suspect it's going to look pretty similar to as it is now, but to the extent that there are some changes to it, um, some nuances, they take into account stakeholder feedback. We also may want to wait until that process is finalized before going back and looking at the Reading Reg because I would hate to see us uh, go through this process, create a regulation, and then have some little nuancey thing come down from the state that would then have to force us to change it. So sure. uh, just, just some things to keep in mind. But with that said, I'm, I'm going to take my direction from the board and what, what you choose to assign me. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry if you said the name and I missed it. So the first thing you said, there's an organization currently working on some wording. That's my understanding. That's just that's just what I've heard through um, chatting with some friends of mine. I believe it's the Mass Association of Health, Health Boards. Boards. I wonder yeah. if they mentioned um, that at our last, mm -hmm. um, at the training session that they had recently. But it sounded like there wasn't much additional wording. Okay. Um, yeah. But it does sound like, too, if we're waiting on the final verbiage from the state, then we should just, we wait, should just for wait for that. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense to me. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense to me as well. Yeah. I'm usually not in a rush to get things wrong, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Um, so we'll at least wait, I guess, until that happens. Yeah. And maybe MHB will, pro they'll probably wait for the same. <coughs> Yeah, I, I just heard that through chatting with some people. I don't know how accurate it is, um, but it, I know that they put out some other materials with respect to retail sales and, and the smoke free well, Even where it's not finalized, why not just wait until it's finalized? Yep. Yeah. But we would. And then we can always circle back and contact MHB directly and see where they are in that process anyway. Yeah. 
Oh, we very much appreciate you offering yeah. to look at it. Oh, no, I'm going up to. now, edit it, update it. That would yeah. be fantastic. Yeah, I, I, before I uh, started working at the firm where I am now, I was a lawyer for DPH, so this is... Perfect. Great. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Looks fine. That's the same. <laughs> All right. Um, did anyone have comments on oh, the edited version, version from Town Council? I think it's fine. I remember people mentioning cultural and not wanting to include that word. I'm wondering, wondering if it was superfluous, yeah. but I think it's fine. If this has already been approved, that was my only Yeah, I didn't have any questions. Okay, I don't, I don't know if I'm reading this wrong. Okay, section seven complaints. B, no, not B, well, whatever, two. One, no, two. Two. If, if the oh. Board of Health or its designee finds that an investigation is warranted, the uh, such investigation shall be conducted and oh yeah yeah, yeah. I think that's supposed to be it right yeah mm -hmm. so that's the only it was, oh well that was, <laughs> it was the only, and then um i don't know the do we do we set the effective date or is that something that is set by the select board I don't know who I'm looking at. Oh, was that, <laughs> say that, sorry, I was reading that. Say the question. Sorry, the effective date, is that something that the Board of Health sets, or is that something that the select board sets after they... You're talking about the, at the at section yeah. 11? Yeah. Yeah, I think my understanding that this draft has to now go back to the select board. Yeah. Okay. Like so we really just try. leave it blank. Okay. I would, yeah. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure. Okay. So... Okay, so the only change is that one word. <laughs> what did you want to change? So there is, okay, section seven, complaints, uh, under two, it says, there's just a, uh, it says, if the Board of Health or its designee finds that an investigation is warranted, such investigation shall be conducted, and then it says, and right currently it says, and of the Board of Health. But I think it's supposed to be if the Board of Health. Can I change it, or does it have to go through the it? I don't think it has to go through. I think you can change it. Can These change are it. That's suggested that's, that's edits. Right? If, if, you have a, if you have a Word version of this, you can change it. I'm also happy to send you an updated version in the morning. It would be just easier to let Alex make the correction. Sure. Maybe, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not a substantive change so we can right. just yeah yeah that's just mm -hmm. a I do have a clean version on the list I think it's easier be easy just I have it yeah I guess like we that. probably have to do we have to I guess <laughs> we probably have to yeah make a yeah this is a this is a new, yeah, new. Um, new version so we should yeah. yep I'll make a motion to adopt this Got a new name now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Pest management regulation for land owned by the town of Reading. A second. All those in favor? <laughs> Three zero. Mission passes. Okay. Uh, 
So this will all, okay, then once I, once, I guess once you get it, or whatever, send it on to uh, select board. Select uh, board. Caitlin usually yeah. manages okay. that. Perfect. Um, I did talk to the town manager about it and said that it was under the review tonight of the Board of Health, and one likely would be coming back to the select board. So yeah, they're aware that it's coming. Yeah, yeah. Andy and Ann had reached out to me and asked what the like something the status at the time. Yeah. So. Yeah. They know it's coming. Okay. <laughs> so you want me to get it on their calendar and get back to you on a date? That would be great. Yeah. Um, Do we have to? Yeah, so I think what's going to happen is Alex is going to send it to me because uh, that's just the way we do it with the um, communication with town council. Mm -hmm. So I will um, forward it to Bob. Oh, okay. And then um, we'll see what Bob, I don't know what the schedule is. So I'll forward it right away to the town manager and then he knows it's coming to, I don't, it's kind of tight with the, with the schedule, but he'll have to juggle on. It's both tight and there's a March 3rd election. My yes. assumption is this board will wait for a new board to look yeah. at something like this. I, I, think, I guess. Maybe, I think maybe they not. only have three meetings between, well, we're meeting uh, a week from tonight, but right. I think after that there's only two more meetings until the election. So it may make sense to wait till that. Because we know there's going to be at least one new member. Yep. Or a swap or an additional? Well, there's board somebody who's no, not somebody's running. No, somebody's not running oh, okay. again. Yeah. Okay. The, the yeah. term's up and they're not running again. So there'll be at least one new member of the board. So sometimes they'll just say, why don't we let the next board handle that rather than... <laughs> yeah. But they may also say, where's well, a continuation of knowledge on this board? I know. So we'll see. It all yeah. depends on the schedule, too. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll definitely let you guys know um, what we're out with that. Thanks. All right. Okay. 2020 goals. If there's no... I was going to say, yeah. Alice wants to stay. Oh, yeah. She's welcome she to stay, to but if there's <laughs> yeah. anything no, else on I the think... agenda that we think we might need her. So, no. All right. I'm dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you Thank you for coming. Thanks for coming out. You're Thanks welcome. Thanks for your help. I'm happy to be here. So you're going to let them know when they're on the agenda? Yeah. So we should attend that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. I can tell you what the meetings are if you want to just put a hold on your calendar. Mm -hmm. Sure. So it's too late for the 21st, so that's not going to happen. Right. And the packet's actually going out tomorrow at noon. So. Um, <clears throat> so the meeting after that would be February 4th. And then, and then February 11th. What's that? Do you know what time? 7 p.m. Oh, it's also As 7 a rule. Yeah. Um, and then the election is March 3rd. And the next scheduled select board, and this is always subject to change, but the next scheduled select board meeting is March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. One thing that I had on my list of potential goals was um, coming. I think the select board just did, the, did just did this, which was coming up with an onboarding sort of packet for new members, which just discloses, you know, something that's written. It says what all of our responsibilities are, all in one place, so people can get up to speed. Mm -hmm. That's Maybe great. we can add information that we've learned from the MHP yeah. in terms of those responsibilities. Um, might be useful. I know that MHB, did they, 
they have a new manual, but then I didn't say anything about how you find it. it. Get it. No, I found the legal handbook, but right, there's another. Well, there's one that you pay for. I don't know if the legal yeah. handbook provides. Like Maybe. Okay. So I don't know if the other handbook is something that you can yeah. purchase from them. But they talked about it, right, so it must exist. I can Google around for a second. But that might be something that could be useful mm -hmm. in the future. And it's a relatively straightforward task for a board member. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's been talk of an electronic inspection system somewhere down the line where I, I know that's this is a longer process, but do you have any idea where the town is in incorporating this new software system generally across the, I, I realize the different departments will come probably come at different times, but, or get set up with it, but. Yeah, I know Daniel had gone to a meeting on that. Maybe Laura could. Oh. Um, um, the way we're changing our software system, as you know. Yeah. So um, they're just trying to iron it out. So I'm actually going, I think it's in a couple of weeks, to the meeting where we can discuss what, how to iron out the inspections okay. because they're all different. Okay. Are they talking about going to an electronic format? I don't know if the food inspections will go electronic. Oh, uh, okay. And I don't know in what stages they'll roll out everything individually electronically. Um, he just went for the actual setup today, oh, okay. but he couldn't answer any of the questions about inspections because he doesn't do the other right, inspections, right, right. so I'll be going um, to the next meeting. So is this meeting with IT, IT or with it? Okay. Yeah, what's happened is, I think we might have talked about this at one point, um, the software program that we've been using, View Permit, is um, moving over to the cloud, and it's called view point point thank you <laughs> I, was like, I was like view viewpoint <laughs> yes so it's moving over and um, as part of that it's been a little bit slower than um, than expected um, but hopefully in the end working with viewpoint there'll be a lot of added features that we didn't have under view permit and um, a couple of people from the department have been going to the meetings regularly and just updating us. Okay. But I'm going to join Laura as well at the next meeting where they're going to specifically focus on health and what kinds of tools the software can now offer. Okay. Which is funny because we just trained on view permit today. No. <laughs> <laughs> view permit or was it? Um, With large M, yeah. Scanning thought, in the documents. I thought that was uh, Laserfish. Right, Laserfish. Laserfish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have we have a document soft a document storage program that we work off of called Laserfish. So a lot of the records can be scanned in on Laserfish, and then the two communicate with each other. Okay. So um, for a small town, that's pretty good <laughs> for, for software. Yeah, it is. Um, okay. <laughs> so one of the other things you should probably think about looking into too is um, our five-year strategic plan, I believe, is up this year. Right, Jean? Yeah. Yeah. So we need to look into, probably review that, see if good, bad, or indifferent, and come up with another five-year plan. Yeah, so I mean, I... Or continuation I, of this one? Yeah, I looked through it, and... I think there are definitely holes in, uh, well, we haven't made the progress that I think they had hoped we would make when they've drafted the, um, I, and there's been a lot of changes. Right. Um, so I think that's probably part of it. But um, I think it, it definitely would be good to discuss. Um, I have read it. Yeah, so I also think that it would be amazing <laughs> if we could do anything to have a new evaluation and strategic plan put in place. I mean, I think it would be really 
document. <laughs> One thing I wonder about is whether there's any data that we can pull together without to, without hiring someone to do an evaluation or a full evaluation just to see what progress we've made towards the the items that were highlighted, you know, like moderate or something, moderate or above indicated there was more room for improvement. So if there were any, there were like four or five main areas where I wonder if we could just see, you know, what do we know right now about how well we did on those goals before we launch into creating new goals. I think the absolute ideal would be, again, to basically do this again mm -hmm. um, since it expires in 2020. But if we can't do that, that was done a start. with a grant, I believe. Mm, I, I think believe. it was a combination. I think we put a little bit of money okay. into it, plus a grant, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, I did develop a standard operating procedure, which we did not have before. Gene's actually reviewing it, and then we're going to make a few like tweaks, so hopefully We'll have it at the next Board of Health meeting, but I spent quite a lot of time on that, which will give you an idea of every single thing we do, how we no, do it, the steps bad. we follow, the permits that go with it. So we might that's be able to incorporate this yeah. into it because it gives us more of a, it gives more of detail of exactly what I do. Yeah, yeah, that's useful. Okay. That's great. <coughs> a little long. <laughs> <laughs> um. So do we think the town would have any small budget to put toward this, like a reboot sort of of this project? The if we could get another grant? Or yeah, I presented in December. Oh, I, 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 <laughs> pretty good, I think. I went first. <laughs> um, yeah, December 4th, I presented the, the draft budget that I requested. But as part of the budget process, we always reach out to the boards and see if there are any budgetary needs. So that was done last fall. Uh, but we could start planning for next fall. And it, if funding is a part of this, we could start taking a look at that and seeing if there's uh, funds. Then the other possibility is sometimes there's end of the year surplus dollars that we can um, identify for something like this. I just, I don't know what kind of numbers, because I had reached out to the author of this plan um, many, many months ago, and she's not doing this anymore. Right. right. So, I'm that, yeah. Yeah. She was, I think, I was shocked, because I'm used to what we do on the planning side of the house, and it's six figures, and her fee was so small. Like, I was shocked. <laughs> Not used to seeing those kind of numbers. <laughs> so it was a very economical plan to put together. Yeah, I looked through. It looked like she went off of, hmm, she referenced the national, hmm, what, did she, what are they called? It's another program standard mm -hmm. thing. Uh, the Massachusetts State Health Improvement Plan. And the National Public Health Service. Yeah, the maybe? 10 essential public health services. And so I Googled that. You get this um, group called, uh, it's N-A-C-C-H-O, which I will call Nacho because <laughs> And they have, <laughs> they have a, uh, an assessment instrument, a govern, public health governing entity assessment instrument. Um, is it free or do they license it? It's free. I mean, it's just a PDF. And it's, uh, I mean, it's, you know, mostly what she put in the, in the strategic plan. I think she basically just went off of this mm -hmm. and, and then talk to all of, you know, talk to all the board members and the health director and all the other health department staff at the time. And that's how she made her recommendations. Um, I can send this out to Laura to send to everyone. Um, it's somewhat vague 
<laughs> you know, like one question is, at what level does the governing entity advocate for policies that define a community health assessment process? And your choices are no activity, minimal, moderate, significant, optimal, right? That's where, so that's where she got her terminology from, I think. Um, so I think it's one of those things where either, you know, we can ask ourselves <laughs> these questions and, and come together and have a conversation about where we think we stand. Um, she had some more specific things, particularly in staffing levels. Um, which I think our biggest, <coughs> the biggest difference I, or issue that I saw is we, our nursing level isn't, the nurse that we have in elder services, that was that, is, does she work like solely on elder services or does she work in a capacity more like the nursing navigator that is mentioned? Solely in, in elder services. So she services. works in elder services, but um, if I remember the nurse navigator that they were talking about, it was more of a continuum kind of thing. Is that what they were suggesting, the nurse navigator, kind of go across? Yes. yes. And so what our nurse advocate does is she works, like for example, very closely with the police department. And so there are some things that she's working in cross um, departments. So she does provide a little bit of that continuum in certain cases. Yeah, she helped out a couple of times with the flu clinics when they were at the police department, but that was that's the only thing that she crosses into health. Um, well, I think there might be some other examples where she's working on something that could have police, health, sometimes fire, but it, it's from an elder services perspective. I mean, um, yeah, and it, this... And it's also, it's human and elder services, so I think she assists... Correct, that's interest. how it reads. Yeah. yeah, beyond just elders. Yeah, in this, I think they she was suggesting the nurse navigator be someone who can assist residents with access to services. Which is, I think, what Most we do. And... The, the nurse advocate works very closely with our um, outreach worker. So they work very closely together. So there's a lot of collaboration on medical resources, mental health. Um, so it, it, I don't think it's a perfect yeah. fit to what this yeah. was looking for, but it might be close. And then the other thing she seemed to stress in here was that we have a, actually, a full time actually, but then later she says 32 and a half hour public health nurse, which <clears throat> have we ever had? We did. Yeah. We did. We had a 32 and a half hour public health nurse, but we didn't have a full time nurse advocate. We had a nurse advocate that worked, I, I'm going to say 20 hours. Yeah. And now we have a 37 and a half hour nurse advocate. Yeah, okay. So that... She's kind of both roles. Uh, yeah, it gets, it gets blurry. Yeah, so here they're recommending, for, she was recommending two people. Yep. I remember this. I remember when this came up. And we posted today for a nurse for the health department. Oh, great. Did you? I, didn't want, I don't know if you, I don't recall if your report said we had a resignation. Uh, it did not. Oh, our nurse resigned. I was going to get to that. Sorry. Okay. So we did post for a nurse. And that will be Sorry, that was an hour. Our public health. Yeah. We put part time on the posting. Oh, just part time. Yeah, but um, I don't remember exactly the number of what it's budgeted for. Right. And we have some flexibility. Okay. 
And her last day is Thursday. Thursday. Okay. All right. So I thought we were saying we had a nurse advocate, but not a public health nurse. But we did have a public health nurse. Yeah. And a nurse advocate. Yeah. We we had an okay. hour a week, right? Yeah. Hour? Yeah. So oh. Elise is the nurse advocate. Elise is the nurse advocate. She works 37 and a half hours. So that's a more recent increase in hours for the nurse advocate. <clears throat> but then um, the public health nurse at one point was 32 and a half, and that dropped down. We had a shared arrangement. We did the regional thing, so it was a shared public health nurse. And then we've had um, part-time public health nurses, which I think have worked well. So the nurse that resigned was part-time? Yes, part-time, yeah. She was the public health nurse for the health department. So does this mean we can't have flu clinics now, or do we like contract out with another? Well, do hopefully we we'll have a nurse by the time flu clinic opens up again. Okay, okay. okay. right. We're, we're, done. Done. we're done. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Right, when you were reporting flu earlier, you were talking about this past few months? Yeah. You were just saying flu. Oh, okay. just flu. Yeah, just yeah. Yeah, flu. Um, uh, who fills in in the interim and covers? Well, Maria covers just the maven. So we have another person, okay. but she only covers the maven. Okay. So Who's Maria? Like a, a part timer, yeah. Yeah, so we, we always had like just helps me. another part time, <laughs> okay. yeah. But um, yeah, but we need if anybody knows anybody, we need a nurse. Okay. So okay. we have um, three people that are very interested in the position. So okay. hopefully, oh, that's good. Yeah. The other option is um, we have we do have the nurse advocate, so we do have a nurse. Mm -hmm. Should we, you know, need to draw on that resource? And we also had an arrangement with Hallmark Health, Laura and I had discussed it, where um, then when the nurse advocate was out for a period, uh, supplemental services were brought in through Hallmark Health. So I don't know if that's a viable option, but it's a potential option, um, especially if we were it really in need of some assistance. I, I feel like we at least have that potentially. Okay. Uh, and how, just, I don't know, how many FTEs do we have for inspectors? We have, I know Daniel's full tap, one FTE. How much does, um, so, uh, 17, uh, roughly 17 hours. 17 hours, okay. So for the, we have a full time health agent. We have, um, a full-time health inspector plus, I call it 0.37, of additional part-time inspectors. <coughs> and the public health nurse is a 0.32 for a total of 2.69 FTEs. And that does not include my time. Yeah. That does not include support staff. Uh, like I would just describe Jackie from the town manager's office. I don't know how many hours she spent on the permitting, but it was a lot. Um, and our, our own admin staff provide support for health, so. I would say you're easily at three when you add it all in, maybe, maybe three plus, a little bit over three. And if I remember, the plan was saying four FTEs. So, <clears throat> I don't know if you can you know, think about some of the collaboration that we do with Human and Elder <coughs> Services, our CASA, that re really isn't factored in here. Um, they do a lot with mental health, obviously. So it's kind of hard to quantify is, I guess, the point I'm trying to make. I, I, okay. think, we, I think we're pretty close. So should we familiarize ourselves with the current five-year strategic plan yeah. and look at that nacho resource? <laughs> yeah, look at the nacho resource. Um, <laughs> next meeting, like, come with either ideas or discussions? Yeah, 
think that sounds like a good plan. Yep, sounds um, like a good plan. Yeah, if people can kind of look through all the different categories and Yeah, I'm not able to pull up the uh, what I think assesstoolkit.org is that I think that's the nacho thing. Um, no, um, I just went to nacho.org. <laughs> yeah, I went there and the one that I thought you were looking at was the Association for Community Health Improvement Community Health Assessment Toolkit. <laughs> what what am I looking at? Let's see here. I don't know, I just go back. Maybe you're looking at the community. Governance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, local assessment and government tools, which looks like, okay, it looks like the tree was <laughs> programs, public health. I don't see Do you want to just send me the link and I'll send it yes. to everybody? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Could we also get a link to the current five-year strategic plan. I'm yeah, sure. is it, it is on the website. website. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's easy to find on the page. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then... Um... Uh, the other thing... I wanted on the well, I, I reviewed the um, voluntarily <laughs> God <laughs> voluntary national retail food program standards. It's too many words. Um, and there are a lot of things on there, but it uh, the first thing is really just moving towards the 2013 food code, um, which I think will be. A lot of steps <laughs> involved there. Um, are have you done training for that? Yes. yes. You're trained. Is Daniel doing separate training, or are you I'm training, training Daniel? Daniel. Okay. <laughs> and then, um, yeah. So then, I guess it's just a matter of going over to the a different inspection sheet. This inspection sheet will still work. It just, okay. there's only like a few changes. Okay. There's the vomit spill kit, there's yeah. a signage. There's just not, there's not that many changes okay. to be honest with you. Okay. Well, I thought it was electronic. Wasn't that the 2013 yeah, standard? Okay, do. you would have to do it? Okay. Electronic. The state has a, a prototype inspection sheet that does the and we can switch to that one after Very, you finish this box yeah, of these. Right, That's right, not yeah, a big deal. Yeah. It's not that different. Okay. Yeah. Prototype scares me, though. <laughs> when you said state and prototype in the same words, like, <laughs> that seems problematic. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then I don't know if we want to do something for restaurant owners. To yeah, once we have everything. So we have everything is know that. Okay. And... Should we do some sort of like a presentation for them or so they know what to, I mean, I guess they're, they all have to be serve safe certified right. anyway. So they're probably learning all of this, but. I don't think they would learn. Oh, they don't learn the new. The 2013. Yeah. Okay. I don't so maybe it so. would be good to, yeah. even if we don't host this, we can at least put something, we should put something on the website. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's a good idea. <laughs> right, <laughs> about yeah. changes. The few changes that there are, we could make a separate spreadsheet. Yeah. And, um, or bullet points. Yeah. And send them out a thing. I don't know yeah. if you want to wait until after the tobacco rolls out, that way we're not bombarding everybody <laughs> at the same time. Or if you want to, we can start it now, get the tobacco out, and then by the time we meet and approve it, it'll be like maybe a month or two. Uh... I mean, they were going to different people for the yeah, most part, yeah. right? Or some. All oh, right, I guess it can be some crossover. Not much. But we'll get these out now, even if we agree on it on the next meeting and send it out. That's still yeah. about the pot. Yeah. So you're just thinking, send a little blurb about the new forms that we will be using when we run out of this box. I wouldn't even well, comment on the forms. Just, just the, the changes. Difference in right. the difference in the code. 
sure. There's the well, yeah. Let's go yeah, quick it. bullet point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that yeah. Okay. That's simple. <laughs> Memorable. Yes. <laughs> so are you saying, I mean, just so I understand, so you wanted us to look at the voluntary national yeah. retail food program standards, but then you were just saying the main thing that you wanted to do is well, get I think that's on the first new forms. Well, I think the first step was making sure that we were actually, that everyone was trained in enforcing the 2013 food code. Okay, right. so you're not so what, asking us if we want to do this program. I will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I was just trying to clarify um, what. So I think, I can't remember how long they give you. So you, it, okay, so for those who don't know, you sign up for... For, you, you can register um, for this voluntary food program standards. There are too many. <laughs> too many. And uh, what, once you've signed up, I think you get like, I think it might be five years to complete it. Um, there are nine, nine standards, mm -hmm. although. Just so you know, they're already working on the next booth code. Yeah, I think, well, they have 2017. So the, the first standard isn't, yeah, the first standard isn't specifically the 2013 food code. It's just to be up to date with whatever, ah, what is the specific? You mean how many days you have um, from the time you start? No, I mean how, what's the exact standard one, the wording is? Regulatory foundation. Yeah, and I think they specify, okay. At in the current published edition of the food code or one of the two most recent previous editions of the food code in order to complete that requirement. And I think what they said at MEHB is even though there is a 2017 food code, Massachusetts is only up to the 2013. So if yeah, we're... That's the minimum requirement. Yeah. But, but there are... Consistent with everyone else yes, in the state. But there are towns that have, have already adopted, already. yeah. So are you wondering if we should go ahead and do 2017 now, or? <laughs> She's like, no. Um, <laughs> well, it just, is there, I just, I, would, I don't, it's, you read? Do you know what the, have you looked at the? It's not that, yeah, there's not that many Again, it's not very many no. differences. Okay. I'm good with that. <laughs> If people feel comfortable with the change. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm not doing all that work. So right. it's not. <laughs> for, no, I can't decide yeah. how much it takes to get from the 2013 to the 2017. Looking at you. <laughs> I would go with the 2017. Okay. 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 <laughs> I'm not a voting member, but I would defer. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. As well. That's, okay. That's so we will aim for that. So 2017 food, food code. code. Food code. Food code. Is the goal? It's the goal, and that's coming out when? It's out. It's out. Oh, it right? is out. Yeah, but yeah. everybody's adopting the 13. Okay. Because the state. Well, we're already in 2020. So I just go with the 17. They're already working on At the next one. At some point, the state's gonna have to. It just. It took them a very long time to 13 get. 13 isn't even mandatory yet. Oh. So. So you're going to 17. <laughs> I, you know what I can do? I can put together a uh, list of the differences. Yeah, that, yeah, that sounds good. So you can see how many differences there yeah. are in 17, but I don't think you're going to be okay. opposed to it. Okay. My opinion. Okay. All right. All right. Social summarize. Yeah. Yeah. Again, we did for <laughs> Okay. Um, um, okay, but, okay. So <laughs> the, the way this program is set up is you sign up and then you get like it's five years or whatever to make it through all of the nine uh, standards. And one of the, the goal of it is to make sure that you get some, you know, nice uniform consistency between inspections that you're monitoring to make sure that your enforcement policies are working and uh, 
I think there's one that talks about specifically about um, community outreach and working with um, food industry members um, to try and um, form some sort of partnership. Um, and you can, for some of these, they're going to require a decent amount of work, yeah. which is the issue. The one thing, though, is there are a couple groups that you can apply for grant money from once you've signed up for this, and mm -hmm. that grant money can go towards consultants to do some of the work oh, for you, great. right? That's so, right. I uh, <laughs> um, so I don't. I think it's something where we should all make sure we really look through it and assess, you know, what our priorities are within it. We can always start doing the process without having officially signed up, right? Sorry, are you talking about? five-year strategic plan and no, the 2020 is, food or the food code this is the volun voluntary, voluntary national or national voluntary, voluntary national retail food regulatory program standards <laughs> okay but it's relating to the 2017 food code yeah so the okay. first standard the food code is one of the strategic goals for 2020 Yes. I'm just trying to follow. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So right. the first I like those I mean, yeah. connecting all the dots there. <laughs> the first standard there are nine standards. The first standard yeah. is regulatory foundation. Okay. And the number one component of that is uh, the public health interventions contained in the current public <coughs> published edition of the food code or one of the okay. two most Okay. recent previous editions of Got the it. food code. Okay. okay. So that's where that just comes from. Up. No. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. So but the fact that we're changing to the food code and everything that we add to that plus the standard operating procedure will all go into the exactly. five year plan. Yeah, yeah. it will okay. go into right. the five year plan. Okay. And a lot of those things will actually like the the SOP will be really useful for these program standards as well, and we'll probably tick a bunch of boxes already. Um, mm -hmm. So we're already sort the of the SOP will cover everything that health does, right? From Not just to food, right. everything, right? Right. I'm not going to like it. Took me a long time. <laughs> Okay, thanks for clarifying. So, do you want to talk about that next time and what our thoughts are on whether or not we'd want to move forward actually signing up for the whole thing or just start doing some of the work? Yeah. And then reassess at some point later in the year if we yeah. are interested in signing up. Okay. Yeah, Laura's going to put together um, the differences between the two for our uh, next right now to yeah. 17. And, and sort of if people can look at these and sort of prioritize which of the items they would want to attack first if we did go through some of these program standards or the other nacho, the strategic plan, um, you know, what your priorities are. Just as an FYI, so for the food retail program standards, it looks like Wakefield, Linfield, Wilmington, Andover, and Melrose do them. Yeah. But Woburn, Stone, and Burlington and North Reading don't. Yeah. So just kind of gives us a sense of. Yeah. There was a um, there was a grant half and half that was run through Wakefield that was like the pilot program. Right. So uh, when I was involved, and I actually was part of that. Oh, okay. So that there. It's only that section because they're the ones that are ironing out all the kinks. Yeah. That's why they're the only ones that are doing it because they're all part of the grant. Mm -hmm. Did you have any sense from that sort of up close and personal experience with it whether it seemed like something to move forward with sooner or later? Like wait longer before doing it or or did you not have a sense from you want my opinion? <laughs> I would move forward with the 2017 yeah. and That's not move forward with the electronic inspections yet okay. because the electronic inspections 
a lot different. Oh, they are? Yeah. Yeah. That once you go through something, you can't go back. And it, it, they're, it, they're doable, obviously. Yeah. But I think, my opinion, I would bite off oh. updating to the 2017 yeah. before going electronic. Okay. If I had a choice, I would do that first and then down the road do the electronic. Okay. Because if you do the electronic first and then this, you're going to have to change everything. You have to change everything. Or if you do That's true. them at the yeah. same time, it's going to be even hotter. Yeah, you want to pick your food yeah. code before you go to the electronic. Yeah. That's what I would do. And so we can do the food inspection electronic separate from the other electronic permits because it sounded like they were already doing. Well, we already do our permits electronically as oh, far as they so we send them out the okay. application. They have to if it's a restaurant, they have to give us a serve safe, an allergy awareness, choke saver if it's applicable. Their um, insurance if it's a dumpster company, we have to know you know what dumpster company it is, and if it's a septic hauling system, they have to, you know they, everybody has their own boxes that they have to check off. Then we do the permits electronically. We have an email, we'll mail it to, email it to you. A few people we've had to mail, not many. And so everybody has different things, like tobac tobacco has to have their tobacco license attached, so in order to sell tobacco through the state. So everybody has different things yeah. that they need for their permit, but we send out the application with the checklist, which is what, ja what Jackie did. She, we, me and Jackie sat down and we're like, okay, each person, this is what they need. If they want a tobacco license, this is what they need. If they want a food license, this is yeah. what they need. And she had a cover letter on top of each one. And all it did was change the name and the address. And you just had to check your box and attach your paperwork to your application. But you're talking, okay, so the other thing is when the inspector, inspector actually goes out and uses the electronic form to do with the inspection. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, but I would wait until you're right. updated to the 2017 and you're yeah, used sense to it before way. you dive into the electronic. Plus you said you wanted to use up the forms, yeah, you know, right? Forms. <laughs> Hopefully it'll, yeah, well. it'll run out before. Well, I would, keep, I would act buy forms just in case something happened yeah. when you're out on the field anyways. Yeah. But mm -hmm. before we update to the new forms, I would run out of the forms we have. Yeah. Because they're not cheap in carbon coffee. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so next time, should we look at grant options? Or are you saying if we, we can look? I mean, I think there, are, there. Are, oh, maybe last August. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Maybe last August, it that was one of those meetings when we had like I think we had two packets. <laughs> it was so much, but in there, <laughs> I'll look for it again. In there, I, or I think I had sent, or maybe I had sent an email that got forwarded to everybody mm -hmm. that included... There was one grant opportunity you forwarded. Grant opportunity, and I think it included, like you could actually click through the towns and see what actual grants, they what they had actually requested money for, which is useful because you get an idea of the options and how people are doing things and how much money they're getting. Um, and that, but I can look for that again <laughs> and send it out anew when it's not buried and other stuff. <laughs> okay. I rem I saw this today, which is a list of all the towns, but I yeah. But it doesn't have how much money they got. No. So yeah. There's something. another okay. one. Okay. But I think yeah, I'll, I'll look for it. Yeah, I got in the mon Monday morning weeds. I didn't get some some people's reply. I'm like, I, I got to go in on Friday and send this packet out. It was too much. <laughs> Speaking of the package, was the white copies better, easier to read? Yeah, yeah. much easier. So much easier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that I saw the um, in some of the December ones that the um, Daniel was adding the uh, the letter designation for what mm -hmm. category, and I was like, I think those are 2013 food code letters it's not the critical versus non-critical it was like the core priority foundation whatever and i was like yeah, that's the 2013 food code but i wasn't sure so it was <laughs> okay very good so when you do the comparison um, write down the differences however you're going to do it so 2017 2013 and then are you going to have 
the column for what we currently have? I was thinking of going with what we have in versus 2017. Yeah. Let's uh, just skip the 13. It's, well, inc I think you'll probably have to inc <laughs> If we just, instead of going through all three stages, if we're just going to skip to 17, what do you think? Well, I just... What, 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 I guess my only question is what if they don't didn't know about the vomit thing <laughs> and then but, they, but it would be in the it would be in, okay so you're gonna oh okay so that will be included as yeah it's a difference between that and the 1999 okay right. I get you sorry unless you're thinking of maybe going behind. with the 13 then we could go and then nope. give options nope. it was a step behind <laughs> The only, um, again, defer to your expertise, the only question I have is whether we will have to invent anything more, like more materials going with 2017 if everyone else is on 2013. So it's just a thing to think about. Are there any materials or, I don't, I don't know, is it 2011? What? What, what are we on now? 2011? Which food code? Yeah. 1999. 1999. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You guys wow. were way too optimistic. Yeah, I was like, wait, I don't remember <laughs> But I mean, yeah, in Massachusetts, no, just, <laughs> just, I don't know what happened. But isn't Massachusetts in, code. Okay. in 2013 now? No, we're in 2013 from yes. MHB. Yes. And so I just wondered if other towns have like regulatory language or templates. Well, some or, people aren't even on 2013 yet. Right, right. Huh. And so... If we go to 2017, which I think sounds good, oh, yeah, is there the caveat that then if there's anything new we need to create, like oh. regulatory language or templates or something that we couldn't just find from someone else because everyone else is on 2013? Does that make sense? Yes. But if you're no. Yeah, I see you're trying to get a little economy of scale. not that big of a deal, right? No, Thank you. Put it That's on much better way problem. to put it. <laughs> <laughs> and some people are already on 2017. Which is always a good way to do that. <laughs> Never <laughs> leave that <laughs> Yeah. because their corporate offices oh, make them. Yeah. Okay. So there are people that are already using, like, yeah. voluntarily, like, okay. the chain. 2017. Right. Okay, yeah. so we can get advice from them. If they okay. <coughs> Great. That sounds good. Netflix. Your talkie's on. <laughs> uh, anyone have anything else? For goals? Nope. Um, Daniel and I are getting CPS certified again next month. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you know. Yeah. Right, do you want to talk about Stop the Bleed? Well, I don't know how we're going to do it without a nurse, so I, I don't know. Uh, what I don't know. Like, the police department's doing stuff. The fire department's doing Stop the Bleed. What is how Stop long? the Bleed? Stop the Bleed is, yeah, just... Along the lines of, you know, CPR training, um, having more trainings for Unstop the Bleed, so. Okay. But I don't think we can train on Stop the Bleed, can we? That was my understanding, yeah. I didn't yeah. think I could train on it. I'll, I'll, um, Fire is kind time. of taking the lead on that, so. Sure, that makes sense. Revisit next, revisit it next month, is it? Too high hope to have that we don't have a nurse by next month. <laughs> you didn't bring your crystal ball to <laughs> the posting just went out today. Yeah, okay. so it takes a little, yeah. But you already have three people. I know, but if there's three good. people, so, uh, <laughs> month turnaround. <laughs> we, we do have a nurse on the payroll, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But she's a nurse advocate but she's a registered nurse, nurse. nurse. Yeah. Yeah. actually was working the flu clinic so yeah. okay. we work together very collaboratively okay so the I guess the summary then is that people are going to look at the strategic plan mm -hmm. I was going to send the link for the nacho yep nacho great mm -hmm. let me write that down <laughs> I guess we can, we'll do a that would rolling review at the next meeting of the 2017. That we can get trained. Yeah. Because you just have to be the RN to train them. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think so. Yeah, she's right. That makes perfect sense. 
because we can get she she's she's 100 correct because we can get trained in it but we just can't train people in it because we're not rns uh, so okay. i'll get me and daniel on that training as okay. well okay <coughs> absolutely and then and then um the voluntary yeah and then um it's more the volunteer and then <laughs> going back to the voluntary national retail <laughs> food regulatory program standards one of these times i'll get it without oh, looking no. at it Can anybody <laughs> just call it 2017. <laughs> yeah. and we will review those uh standards and come back and assess what how we want to proceed yeah okay sounds good is somebody going to send those around again yeah i can i'll i'll find those and okay and send them to laura <clears throat> standards for 2017 uh no i will not have you okay you're sending nacho i'll send nacho and the volun the whole voluntary program standards that just list the different categories but i won't okay. send the 2017 anything really about the 2017 food code because i don't know anything about it <laughs> but if you could if you could give us an idea of what the differences are at the next meeting that would be useful that good yep, yep. Good. anyone have anything else uh we have meeting minutes yes sorry uh, um and and dates dates all right <laughs> i found my way out <laughs> <laughs> so it was two changes from the packet from the meeting minutes that i sent last year the date i had not i had, oh. had written i had written 2020 Okay. Up at the top. And then there was one conflict. Do you know which one it was, Jean? Was it December that conflicted with um, Slotwood? I think it was, I yeah. Think so. December date. So just make sure you're looking at the one from this package, okay. please. Okay. I think it was December, wasn't mm -hmm. it? I think so. All Tuesday nights, all 7 o'clock, all this room. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, all this room. <laughs> you like the room, I huh? Think feels bigger you know <laughs> it's a more it doesn't get as hot that's true it does not so do we need to approve them or just like that no, you need to approve. Okay. yeah we what do. the minutes i mean the schedule I don't we don't need to okay. Okay. okay, so I'm going to post it, and then if we need to change it as the months come, we can change it. Yep, okay. sounds good. Perfect. I did book the rooms already. Perfect. You really I'm do excited. like the room. <laughs> <laughs> One happy village. <laughs> All right. I thought this room was hot, too, though. <laughs> Let's do the pressure. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Everyone good with the meeting minutes? I am. Well, I thought it was. I was, but it says Andy Freeman and Ann Lundy were members not present. Yeah, they weren't. They were not present. But they were not members. They're well, liaisons. They're liaisons. They're liaisons. Yeah. So that counts as members? Okay. Uh, no, they're not members of the board. They're liaisons to the board. Right here. Yeah, right there it says members not present. Should that be a different yeah. others? Should that not even be there? I don't know. Should that even be there? <laughs> Um, I would just say not member. present. Li liaison, select board liaison, not thing? present, or just yeah. don't even put it in. That's a template thing. Because uh, I just send the Google Doc. Oh. I wouldn't even put it in. Because they're not members. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Just delete Andy Friedman and Ann Landry. Mm. Yeah. From the. Okay. Mm. So it seems. Oh. Yep. Yeah, because you're capturing think... the next one who other people who are here. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> we believe you. I'm just the... <laughs> We believe you. It's okay. <laughs> All right, on that, I'm good. Yeah, I've heard. Or 
motion to approve the minutes of the November 26th meeting. As amended. As amended. Hmm. Thank you. Second. All those in favor? Three zero. Motion passes. Would you mind if I take that letter back so I can put it in the packet? Yes. And do you want me to copy of it or do you? Actually, I have a copy if that would be helpful. Oh, okay. And I have the thumb drive they sent me. You don't want this? Oh. Do you need it? I don't need it. Okay. <laughs> Do you need yours? No. Do you want the thumb drive? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll be there if you need it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> would you uh, like a motion to adjourn? <laughs> yeah, I would. <laughs> motion to adjourn? <laughs> I second. All those in favor? <laughs> 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 <laughs>